And if you look at the screen, I have uh, an example from something that's, you know, called daily oral language. What are the students learning about language by this ritual or this activity, this editing activity, do you think? Pa Paula, what did you want to ask? I, I think that it's a lot easier to edit when it's disconnected from meaning, which isn't really what we're asking kids to learn how to do. It's much more difficult when you're invested in what you've written to be able to pull yourself back and edit it without putting in the words that you kind of hear in your mind as opposed to reading the words that you have actually written on a page. That's much more difficult when meaning is connected, and, and I think that's why we need to spend so much more time on that. Okay. Okay, so this is the, you know, something that that – doesn't always transfer over. And, we, and right. when we're asking what are they learning, we're wanting them to learn how to find their own mistakes. But is that actually occurring? Or, you know, is it what I just call it? I call it the author's electric chair because they're just basically screaming at this sentence. And, and the part that... Well, the, you know, I have a question about that because... Oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay, because I agree with you on the daily oral language that, you know, we're just sort of training them to respond to overhead kind of things. What about giving them text from their own papers? You know, when they give you a body of work and pulling out just random sentences, but also showing them model sentences as well without yeah. names attached. You know, put up a model sentence and say, you know, why do we really like this? And then also put out another one. You know, so it's not obvious which kid wrote it, and they know ahead of time, but you're actually taking their work instead of just this random daily oral language. Oh, and, and I think I think you're 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 really hitting on something important there. So making it. What else do you notice about this sentence? It can be about writing, it could be about grammar, it could be about marks, anything that you see in the sentence right now. Bonnie? I can hear my students asking, how comes Lysol capitalized? So I can just hear that. Okay, great. So the kids might say, um, yeah, you know, or they will, you know, if you put up a great sentence and they're used to just correcting them, mm -hmm. they will, they'll try to, they'll try to, hey, you know, that list author, you know, don't take the capital letter off of that. You know, they don't, they don't know what that is. So yeah, we could say Lysol is capitalized and say, oh, it is capitalized. Now what, why do you think that is? And then they might, we can get into that idea of the name brand or the proper noun, whatever labeling kind of we want to go with that. And of course, what's one of the things we do is we go back and we model. So I just shared, you know, a model with the kids of an imitation. I used my reader's eyes and started off by naming a place, Hector's Room. And I borrowed her words, <laughs> smelled of. So Hector's Room smelled of hot Cheetos, gym socks, and lime. And, you know, right away my kids say stuff like, oh, sir, that one's about a young kid. I'm like, well, it doesn't say it's about a young kid. How do you know this is about a young kid? Well, because of the things he has, like hot Cheetos gym socks. And they'll say, yeah, and the other guy was old. And they go, no, it doesn't say that. How do you know? And then what they're doing is they're inferring, and I make sure to tell them that. Because, of course, what's something else that kids are told? All right, so I would um, normally have you do an imitation of your own. And so I'm going to invite you uh, if anybody has one right away, because that pattern, the reader's eye, see that we start off with the place, his room, Hector's room, and then we borrow the word smell of, and then there was just a list of three or more items, and there are three or more items that could have a proper noun in it. It may not. could be concrete, concrete, abstract. It may not. The only thing I'm asking is you name a place, smell of, and then a list of three or more items divided with commas. And if something comes to someone and they want to share it, Please just raise your hand so we can hear one. Yes, Andrew. Okay, um, Kim. Yeah. Her room. Oh, is, uh, is yours is yours anonymous? Because I'll have to share it. With somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not now. <laughs> Her room smelled of mothballs, sweat, and anxiety. Oh yeah, Oh, that's wonderful. And 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 Bonnie, did you want to share yours? Uh, it's out there. They, it's already up. Oh, okay. Uh, the air smelled of diesel fumes, firewood smoke, and cold. Good job, sir. 
Her classroom smelled of warm brownies, fresh crayons, and the first day of school. And the kids have so much. Y'all are wonderful. I want to give you all a, a big hand, but I'm afraid my clapping would hurt our ears. So <laughs> I'm giving you one. And because we're celebrating what you did. And so positivity, again, back into this. So we're not just kind of ignoring editing and ignoring those patterns that are so powerful and useful. So basically what they they love to listen to each other. And again, you know, the peanut teacher, you know, wah, 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 wah. They're listening to each other and they're deepening into that pattern. And then guess what's going to happen the moment they go into their reading that day in science and social studies? They're going to see serial commas. They're going to see sensory detail in a new way. I mean, it's that idea of reading like a writer. Um, and there's brain theory to back this up. I think it's called the reticular activation system. And, and you know how this works basically. Like your friend gets a new red Volvo. All of a sudden you're driving down the road at the grocery store in the parking lot. You see red Volvos everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And they were there before. You just didn't notice them because your reticular wasn't tapped in that same way. Well, the same thing happens with this kind of intentional uh, inviting kids into the editing process. They're going to start seeing it in the reading in a new way that's going to pop out at them, just like tonight when you read, I promise you. You're going to see serial commas. You're going to notice how it's so often in threes. You're going to notice some uh, some specific detail or a proper noun. Something's going to pop out at you. And, and, and I think this whole idea, I guess, we're going with is we're trying to make grammar and editing a creational facility rather than a correctional one. Yeah. That it's about creating meaning and joy and, and, and special effects in our writing that can be so cool. And, and this invitational editing idea is just pulling in them with the noticing, comparing and contrasting and imitating. We can combine sentences and uncombine like that are recommended in the uh, 